All right, welcome back, uh, Algebra 1, Hananiga Algebra 1 students. This video is on Section 9.5. We are skipping 9.4 on purpose. So there's going to be some things along the way here that I want to cross out because we go ahead we went ahead and skipped to 9.4. And don't tell your teacher, but I'm changing this question. So we'll change that to a 15 instead of a 5. So again, don't tell your teacher that. But if I wanted to solve this by factoring, so I'm looking for factors of negative 15. They're going to end up getting you negative 2. So negative 5 times positive 3. So x minus 5, x plus 3 equals 0. Set the parentheses equal to 0 and get x equals 5 and x equals negative 3. Now, let's say I don't like factoring. Let's say factoring isn't one of my favorite chapters. Well, there is another method. Okay, there is a formula that we are going to learn that will allow me to solve problems that have an A, a B, and a C. So here we go. We've learned solve by graphing, so telling me where it crosses the x-axis. We've learned solve by factoring. We're going to cross this one off because we ultimately are not doing that one now. We've done solve by square root property. That's the video that we did on section 9.3. And so our last one that we are going to learn in this class is solved by the quadratic formula. Now, this next page is basically how did they come up with the quadratic formula? Okay, and if we learn solve by completing the square, this would make a little bit more sense to you. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this page because we decided not to do it. And ultimately, we are going to memorize the quadratic formula. Now, there is a mnemonic device that allows us to memorize the quadratic formula. I do believe that we are giving you the quadratic formula on your test, but x is equal to negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So again, that is, and I will go ahead and do that one more time, and I'm going to do it as if it's pop goes the weasel. So x equals negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so I'm going to change this question right here back to the one that I remember, don't tell your teacher. So A would equal 1, B would equal negative 2, and C would equal negative 15. And so now I'm going to use the formula instead. So negative B, or the opposite of B, plus and minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now, the hard part about this is what is known as the discriminant. It's the stuff under the radical here. That negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 15. So 2 plus and minus the square root. Um, you end up getting 64. Square root of 64 is 8. So 2 plus 8 divided by 2. 2 minus 8 divided by 2. And so this is 8 plus 2, which is 10 divided by 2 and 2 minus 8, which is negative 6, divided by 2. So if you flipped back to the very first slide that we did, and I solved by factoring, this would give me the exact same answer. Now, a lot of times things are not factorable. So this formula allows us to solve things that are not always factorable. What would the graph look like? Well, we'd have a graph, and it would cross at the 5, 0, and it would cross at negative 3, 0. And so it would be a parabola that crosses in those two locations. So again, solve by graphing, solve by the quadratic formula, solve by factoring are all legitimate methods. So here we go. We are going to actually do this question again using the quadratic formula. So A, B, C. So negative B plus and minus the square root of B squared. Be careful when you're squaring a negative. To always put it in parentheses. Minus 4 A C all over 2a. So now, again, the hard part is what is known as the discriminant. It's the stuff under the radical. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my calculator on. And I'm going to get the radical square root of 25. Square root of 25 is 5. And so now I'm going to break this into two questions. 13 plus 5, which is 18, divided by 2 is 9. 13 minus 5, which is, sorry, 13 minus 5, which is 8, divided by 2, which is 4. So again, 
using this the formula, I don't need to know how to factor. I don't need to know all those other things that we've learned previously. I just need to know what's A, what's B, what's C, and plug the numbers into the formula. This will work on any quadratic that I am trying to solve. Well, just like any time else that I've also tried to do with solving, I need it to equal zero. So I'm going to subtract 10x, and I'm going to add 6 so that it equals zero. And so now A is 1, B is negative 10, and C is positive 6. Negative B plus and minus the square root. Again, B squared minus 4, A, C, all over 2, A. The hard part is what's known as the discriminants, the stuff under the radical. So 100 minus 24, and I'm going to get 76. All right, so now here's where things get a little bit more complicated. The square root of 76 is not an integer. It's a decimal. It's 8.72. So I got... 10 plus and minus 8.72 divided by 2. So again, I am still going to have to do two problems here. Separate, so 10 plus 8.72, and divide it by 2, and get 9.36. 10 minus 8.72, and divide it by 2, and get 0.64. So again, the quadrant, this is not factorable. So think about that. If it was infactorable, what would I do? I can't factor it. I can't use the square root property. All the other methods that I have learned to do, I can't do. So I'm going to end up having to do the quadratic formula because I know what A, what B, what C is. So the quadratic formula is the go-to move if I can't use the square root property and I can't factor something. Again, I need it to equal zero. So I'm going to rewrite the question by adding 8x. And notice that I put it in standard form. So the 8 the positive 8x I put into the middle. So a is 2, b is 8, and c is 8. Negative b plus and minus the square root, b squared minus 4, a, c, all over 2, a. Now, what happens if I end up getting a 0? Well, remember, plus and minus 0. Square root of 0 is 0, so Negative 8 plus 0 is still negative 8. And a, negative 8 minus 0 is still negative 8. So instead of having one, or excuse me, instead of having two answers for this one, I'm only going to have one answer. So negative 8 plus 0 divided by 4, and negative 8 minus 0 divided by 4 would just get me negative 2. So, uh, excuse me, A is 2. B is 4, C is 8. So negative B plus and minus the square root of B squared minus 4, A, C, all over 2, A. All right, we got a problem. When I do this, I end up getting the square root of a negative, um, excuse me, negative, let me try this again, sorry, 16 minus negative 48. Am I allowed to take the square root of a negative? We talked about this when we did the square root property in section 9.3. I'm not allowed to take the square root of a negative. It's going to be imaginary, which you will learn in algebra 2. So square root of negative 48 does not work, and so therefore there is no solution to this question. All right, now go ahead and hit pause. Go ahead and try to do this by yourself. And I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. A is 7, B is negative 2, and C is negative 9. So negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4, a, c, I can't flip my negative 9 in there, all over 2, a. So 2 plus and minus the square root. The hard part about this is always going to end up being the discriminant. So 4, uh, let me type this into my calculator here. Sorry about the pause there. So I get 256. Square root of 256 is 16. So now, two answers. 2 plus 16, which is 18, divided by 14. So I'm going to get 18 fourteenths. 
and then 2 minus would be negative 14. So negative 1 is one answer. Simplify, this would be 9 sevenths. Um, if you wrote that as a decimal, it's 1.29. So again, hopefully you got that right. There is a homework assignment or a day one assignment. Assignments may be slightly different, so obviously check your Google Classroom. But this is uh, the quadratic formula. So this will conclude uh, quadratic formula. Remember, if you have any questions, please make sure to contact your teacher. Um, this is going to be 9.5, sorry, going back to the previous page, 9.5 day one. So quadratic formula. Uh, be safe and hope everybody uh, understands.